Hi, welcome to the Lee Kempner House in Galveston. I'm Janie and I'm the president of the nonprofit set up to restore and preserve this incredible house. It is a very busy time for us. We are just a couple of weeks away from our big fundraising event, the Steampunk Festival, and there is so much to be done. So we are not wasting any time. My husband let me drive his truck today because I have to go to the concrete dump. We have a lot of people coming and this front is very uneven where we took up the sidewalk and there's still a concrete curb remaining. All of that needs to come out. All of this needs to be raked down smoothly with a gentle slope and there is no time left to get this done. McNack Construction is also here continuing work on installing our beautiful curved windows and David Kona, our plumber, is here. We still need those flushing toilets and to get rid of that porta potty. So there's a lot to do and we are hustling. Okay, so that's our old copper line and I told the city they replaced the meter for me because we knew we were going to be doing work and I told them they didn't have to reattach it because it leaked inside anyway and we knew it was going to get replaced. So today David and his guys are going to dig this out, cut out all that pipe and get ready to run an inch and a half, inch and a half line, inch and a half line into the house so we can get some temporary water going to our toilets. <laughs> And I can take uh, unscrew this plywood on the door over there so y'all can go in and okay. out there and be easier. That'd be great. There's just like three little screws in it. Good morning. Good morning. There's Walter. <laughs> Lots have changed since you were that here. Must be a big day. It is yeah, it's a big it. day all the way around. Okay, they dug a big hole and everybody left. I think they went to go buy the material that they need, but that's interesting. And there's the remnants of a little brick wall coming out here. I don't know what that goes to. But you can see here the dirt is way up over the original foundation of the house. Let's go see what Joe is doing. She's on a mission to keep people from twisting their ankle in the yard. We have holes and weird pipes and all kinds of stuff everywhere. Is that a hole or a pipe? It was a hole. It was a hole. But it had grass on top of it, so I'm putting the grass back. <laughs> oh, see. Oops. And she found More a pipe. A dip. She found a pipe out I here. I need to take a picture so I can fill that in. Yesterday, or day before, someday. Oh, there it is. It goes way down there. I don't know what that is. But it looks to be something cast iron that somebody poured a concrete plug in, but the plug is broken. So I don't know what's going on there. We're going to put dirt in it. And this is part of the old drainage system. So maybe that's a pipe coming out of here where they collected water and sent everything into the basement of the house into the cistern. Are you filming or talking to Kelly? I'm talking to myself. No, I'm filming. <laughs> because since you filmed down my shirt when I've been I done. possibly filmed down your shirt. We'll cut that out. Today Ben and Josh are back working on that same window. They are doing some very, very minor adjustments to make sure that everything fits and closes exactly as it should and one problem area is where the bottom of the sash meets the sill that sill is sloped and so the bottom of the sash has to be cut at the exact same angle for it to fit snugly and to do that they're going to make a scribe and i'll show you what they do to correct that Okay, we got the hand planer today. So, too fine of a work for power tools. I left my, uh, I left my handy dandy saw that has a curved base. 
Does it really have a curb? No. Oh. I don't know. That, I don't know <laughs> ah, that's a new one. That's well, a new you know, one. If you, if you think about cutting this, like the base of the saw would. Well, you could use the jigsaw and turn the, turn the angle. Oh, yeah. That'd be fun. If I see people getting jigsaws out for stuff, something that's... Something's wrong. No. <laughs> There's a time and place for jigsaw. They're just not as accurate as... If I cut... You, I maybe could have trimmed a little bit of that off with the saw mm -hmm. and then Done get, the... get it down to where I want with a hand plane. Mm -hmm. But the hand plane also fun. makes a nice... Uh, the finish it, nice. it leaves is going to be yeah. a lot cleaner than a saw, too. Yeah. So. Well, and it's funny. I don't have to show them how you mark this because... We have a mm -hmm. faux pas in the basement on our concrete where the toilet sits. It's uneven, and so I have to build a form. Okay. And so I had to actually do what you did. So the plywood would describe the okay. uh, dip yeah. to cut it. And I actually haven't done that video yet showing them how to do that. But you did the same thing on the window. That's actually, I've done it next to brick before. And and that, you know, other people that are carpenters, if they see you do that and scribe something into brick and it like fits in there real nice, it's like, oh, that's yeah. nobody's doing. Yeah. You know, so sometimes something as simple as a scribe, people are, you know. Yeah. And it's not high tech, you know. No, it isn't. No. You can do it. I've done it with a, a, a shim and a bit of tape and a pencil. Yeah. Mine was you a Sharpie it. held yeah. onto a pencil. Yeah. Yeah. You can. <laughs> You don't have to. You don't actually have to go out and buy a fancy. No fancy tools. You can. They do have some pretty nice um, scribe tools out there. Um, well, one of those things I've always wanted and I don't have is it has all the little metal pieces that you push up and it forms yeah. the contour yeah. for tile work because I have to. I like to close cut the the tile, and I end up making a cardboard template and paint in the neck. Once the sash was perfectly seated against the sill, it was time to move on and start putting the outside trim in place. To do this, they're using some stainless steel screws. Everything down here in Galveston with the climate is about preventing rust or corrosion. So when you can use a metal that won't rust or corrode, it's preferable. But the problem with stainless screws is they're very soft and can be difficult to get in. Any more screws? Or you got screws up there? I probably need a couple more. A couple more? those stainless screws hard to work with they feel so soft sometimes it's like yeah, this you like stripping screws out stripping them out like yeah. breaking them yeah they're awful yeah you gotta pretty drill really them drill like them that while I'm going back and forth just so I don't twist them yeah. off yeah yeah you gotta they're a pain I say you gotta treat it like I, I would gingerly ginger ah ha ha carpenters are known for their bad jokes I am at the concrete dump and taking a little break. I'm almost done. And just a weird thing that my brain does is I'm doing repetitive tasks like this. Sometimes my brain counts. So it's been counting how many pieces I've thrown out. This is Scotty and he's a legend here in Galveston. And we're in his store. It's Antique Warehouse on 25th. And it's so cool. It used to be an old brothel. And the upstairs is fabulous. And every time I come in here, I spend too much money because look, look at everything. I've already found some things I covet. But he has been saving for me. And, and I'm embarrassed because he told me like a year and a half ago or two years I came in that he had something for me he needed to show me. And But you're only open like friday saturday and sunday and sunday and i'm almost never here on those days and it was in the back of my mind and i kind of forgot about it and then 
a friend of Scotty's, Joseph, reminded me, and I'm here on a Friday, so I swung by, and he just pulled these out of the back, and they're, you, well, you tell what they are, because you know I'm just seeing them for the first time, and so this is where the crying may start, but go ahead. <laughs> um, so they're scrapbooks of the people that um, were living there. This the, is dated 1939, and I believe it was the wife doing the scrapbook, the scrapbooking. So in 39 would have been... Um, Samuels. Eliza maybe. Kempner. Samuels bought it in 72. But, but, but the Samuels uh, may have been keeping these before they moved in the house. Okay, they may good, be that old. Good. That's a, yeah, that's a thought. Because the, uh, Samuel, John Samuels bought the house and put his mother and father in there. And he was a postmaster. That's right. I think, from and, Galveston. So. And most things in here are from the postal. Oh, okay. So, yes. So, that makes sense that these would be John Samuel's mother's and in scrap. One, and look there. It's an old wallpaper book. Yes. They were, when you went to, when they, when you wanted to do wallpaper and they would come to your house and, um, you know, go through the Bring pages. The yeah. All right. And we're in here and we're looking for, um, uh, I believe I saw... The, uh, the 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 title to the building. Oh look, there's the bishop's palace. Bishop's palace. Here's the beach. They have a lot of Galveston. Uh, Galveston built for protection. Here's a historical <gasps> home store, the Oleander. Oh, from. I uh, don't. I don't that? know if they gave the year. But you got bishops, bishops Ashton, Ashton Villa, Samuel May. Oh. Uh, that that's Jean Lafitte's. It's gone it's now, but gone it's on. Now. It burned. It's on it? Harbor Side. Did, did it but burn this part, this part's there that's though. That's still there. Yeah, I just drove by that. Actually. So there you go. Here's some fun oh stuff gosh. in here. Um, photos. Here's a storm. Here's one of the storms. Wow, look at this. <gasps> oh my gosh. That's just fine. What the heck is that? These are real photos. This is and that's a seawall. Uh, this is our seawall. But I don't I'll know. have to look up the hurricanes. That looks, that looks like maybe there's a storm here, but we know that looks like uh, the Buccaneer with the arch. But I thought the Buccaneer was up on the beach. Uh, over no, it's the across the street. So I don't, I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. It's, it's on. That's on the seawall oh, though. So it's cool. So you got some. Investigation. All right, this is going to take months because Man. I will have to read everything. Galveston Daily News, Wednesday, 1938. Someone out for a joyride, one of the workshops. I saw, I saw the address, and I was like, she's really going to love this. So she just cut out all kinds of strange things that she, did, she was she interested them up, in. And she wrote on them, and you know, okay. um, all Galveston stuff, oh you know. It's pretty cool. Oh, I was going to marry Jim Garner when I was little. He was, he was, oh, I that's how old, that I, that's how old I am. I was in love with him. I, I think everybody marry. was. He was He's so handsome. The, he was the man's man, you know, you know. got Maverick. and you, I think you're going to have a lot of fun in here. That's There's just so page cool. after page after history. and. So, thank it. you for saving them for me for oh, so you know, long. I appreciate what's this it. Here? Why do I have that? Mark? Do you have something marked? Maybe that's the. What's this? What is that? John Charles League. League House. Historic American something in survey. So some kind of survey of historic homes. Okay. That's super cool. And look at this little bathroom on the interior side. And the old linoleum rug. It's got cool stuff, but it's also just an incredible building. And the plumber's back. They dug a hole and promptly left. It was actually lunchtime, and then they had to go get material. So they are back, and it's turning out to be a fabulous day. Good. All right, I'm back from the dump. It's always a good time being back and from the dump. <laughs> back, from the, back from the concrete dump. And I didn't find any goodies today. Usually I come back with something. But look. Oh, and we 
have a lock. Oh, and show them. I'm gonna climb up and show yeah. them. Oops, how uh, when you lock that, how it Sorry. how it. Um, here, you'll have to work the lock. Well, let me show them how it snugs together. Yeah, it will actually. So see, it, there's well, he doesn't have the inside stuff, in, but when he when he closes yeah, the lock. Right now, it still yeah, moves so a little bit. See how it. But it will actually. You can see it pull together. It's not for the uh, snug up. It's so pretty, and I'm gonna bring the sash pull and put on, just even though it's not painted, just yeah. because. But I think I mean, it's not. It's not perfect on the bottom, the but bottom? it's it is sealed the whole way. We don't have any really any light coming through. Mm -hmm. It's pretty even going across there. Mm -hmm. And what it's pretty close to flush. Oh, there it is. Okay. At the top here too, so you know I'm not. No light. Too disappointed on that. Okay, we're gonna play Never Have I Ever. So yeah. Ben's question to John was yeah. had he ever seen a lead weight on a window? And the answer is No, I have no. never well, seen never, it. Have. <laughs> never have you ever. How do you know it's lead? Did you taste it? Yeah. Okay. It's sweet. <laughs> the window's sweet. Very nice. Very, very nice. Alright, only two more to go. Number two. Just got its ears clipped. Ooh, that sun. You screwed that down. Well, yeah, that's a good wanna, idea. <laughs> I didn't want to kick it out of the way and step through it. Is it strong enough? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Here, let me test it. I'll test yeah. it for you. It's okay, works. it's good. <laughs> I'm pretty sure too when they did these windows originally, because of the size of the original frames. Uh huh. Those original frames sat, sat back in here. Yeah. And then the, I'm pretty sure that the whole frame assembly and everything was put in, and then they added these bricks around up it. to it. Yeah, yeah. Because there's no physical yeah, way to get see, it in. Yeah, you can see the notch. Yeah, here. Yeah. And you look, and, and looking at it, you think, oh shoot, we could leave this a little bit longer. But you can't. But really, by the time you try to put it, there's no way to tilt it or put it in there. You have to slide it in, yeah. and it's so much more What he's narrow. talking about, it's narrower in the front. So here's our arc mm -hmm. lesson again. It's 47 and a half there. Right. 50, and 50, almost three and a half. 53 and a half there. So big, big difference. Yeah. Big. Big. <laughs> And this, this is, is a complicated process. Well, the interior of this one. Okay, I'm not liking that. Uh, he, he built this back up, maybe? Yeah, he did. And uh, it's... It, to match it, that it, one. It matches this well, uh -huh. but the this side of it doesn't really match the little sub piece we have very oh, well. Okay. So I just couldn't cut my piece to fit in there. But yeah, he tried to match a jigsaw this, was not on this one. Of things to bring, so. I've got a jigsaw if you want. After all that trash talk about jigsaws, Ben needed to use my jigsaw to cut the inside curve of this sill to fit. And what we realized after putting in the first window is that ridge of mortar that's there was put in after the original windows were installed. And the reason that the sill in the first window they did fit so perfectly is because that sill was relatively intact and we took it out and Ben used it as a template to cut all three sills. So when that first window was installed, since the template was made from the sill that came out of that window, it fit perfectly. That's not going to be the case in the other windows. So in hindsight, Ricardo should not have built that edge up 
as we ask him to. We should have left that alone, installed the window, and then come back with mortar after the window's installed. So this window is going to be a little trickier to get in. All right, I have been working on this doorknob for a month, trying to get it loose. So I've drilled out the set screw. I've been soaking it with penetrating oil and WD-40. And today I'm going to actually pry on it a little bit harder. Let's see, oh, I've got, got movement. Got movement. Maybe I can get it with my hand now. Oh, got it. Okay, yay. And I needed that out because I've got to get this, I don't know what you call it, lock set out and sent off for repair and get new lock cylinders on it so we can actually use our front door as a front door. All right, I am heading out, but I just can't get over how much additional light just having one window brings into this house. And to think next week they'll all be done. It's the first day of spring break and it's overcast but actually very pleasant outside. It's just a beautiful morning. McNatt is upstairs with Joe. The plumber called and said they can't come because the fittings are out of stock for our water line. So for safety purposes I have blocked the hole they dug but they will be back on Thursday and hopefully get our toilets set and get the water going. And I am going to be working on those bathrooms down in the basement. So let me show you what's going on. I am down in the chauffeur's quarters today and you can hear McNatt chipping away at the brick upstairs. They're working on a window. Joe's upstairs waiting for tours. And since the plumber didn't come, they're usually very neat and pick up after themselves, but they had planned to be here today and they're not because of those fittings. So I am going to do a big cleanup down here and organize again. This always just gets crazy messed up down here. But my main task today is to kind of scrounge around and find plywood and different things to put up temporary walls on the bathroom because it won't do us any good to get this toilet set on Thursday and not have walls so this is ready to go you can see the water line is in a clean out clean out and test for the kitchen line all of our vent lines and there's our water supply lines for the kitchen that are just stubbed out and our water supply lines for the sink so we have that utility sink that Alfred brought us to put here. So we will have running water to wash hands for the steampunk event. So I need to get this cleaned up and get these walls closed in. I'm a big part of the mess. I brought my big chop saw down to cut some wood to make some ornaments for craft fair we're going to. And it's so heavy, I can't really move it. So once I put it here, it just kind of had to stay here. And I usually have a vacuum on it here to help with the sawdust, but I didn't have time to set it up. So I did make a huge big mess. So I'm going to just blow this off with the blower and then start sweeping up and trying to organize these tools that I got down. And I'm also going to hang these doors and I'll show you where they go. This is something else that our volunteer Alfred brought us their solid wood old French doors. They're in really good shape and we reuse everything we can for it, like we talked about for cost savings and just not wasting things and trying to be as ecologically conscious as we can and not waste good stuff. So I'm going to get started. First, I'm going to collect all the plumber's stuff and get it in one place. These fittings are gross. It's something we had down here. They got flooded and they're nasty. I'm going to go wash them out and sort them. And they've already actually used quite a few of them. I showed you before. I brought a ton of fittings from home. Oh, this is the plumber's trash. Oop. I'm going to save their trash. They threw away some stuff they had on another job and I'll use this to wrap pipes 
later on. So I'm going to tuck that away. There's some more I already picked out the other day. I'll take that home to my husband. He loves this stuff. This is a big sheet of this hospital grade plastic that Alfred had and it's mold resistant. We're actually going to put it behind the sink base to keep moisture from coming through the wall. So that's a good find too. And I don't know why we have a gas line because we don't have gas in the house. The plumber must have had that in their stuff or it was, oh, it was probably in my box of junk that came from home. So I'll take that back home. Anyway, there's just always junk down here. So one thing, we don't own a lot of tools for the house. Everything comes from my house, so I'm always taking it back and forth. I don't know that we need to collect a lot of our own tools down here. Everything gets really rusty and gross in the weather. And once we kind of finish with the heavy construction, we won't really need those kinds of tools to do the finishing work upstairs. So for right now, we'll just borrow. Okay, I am about to mix up some concrete and fill in the hole the plumber had to chip out and dig out to replace the pipe for the toilet. And it's going to be a two-step process. I have to put concrete in first, then I'll have to put up my form and do the leveling compound to get it level up to the bottom of this collar. But I've wet the concrete, wet the sand, tamped it down real good. There is a piece of rebar going through there, so hopefully that will hold it in place. And I'm going to go mix up my concrete. I don't really know how this is going to go. I remembered to bring my paddle down here to mix up the concrete, but I did not bring the big drill that goes with it. So I did have a corded drill down here. It has a lot more power than a regular battery drill. And I don't have to mix up, but maybe a quart or two of concrete. So it's not very much. So I'm hoping that this will do the trick. So I have my bucket, I have my concrete, I've got a little water here. I like to put a little water in first. It just helps things not stick on the bottom and mix better. And this is just a bag of regular quick crete. And it's not going to take very much. I'm doing it outside because it will probably make a mess when I pour it. I'm going to pick it up. I'm just going to tip it because I don't need I don't need a whole lot. That's enough. You can always mix more. Maybe a little more. start with that. And this is one of those things I think y'all have seen me mix grab before. It's like not enough water, not enough water, then you throw in a tablespoon and it's too much water. So you start out light on the water. This baby, this, it'll work, but it's going to be tough. The chuck can't even hold this. It's just, because look, it's going to come out. I can't even tighten the chuck around it, but it does actually turn.
And I like this paddle because it scrapes the edge of the bucket and it gets down in the corners. That looks pretty good. Take that inside. Oh my girl. Didn't like that smoking. I forgot to bring my trowel down. I don't want to go back upstairs. Let's see if I have something that will work. Found a crummy little hand trowel. I hear McNatt and them back up from lunch. I'm just going to pour this in. may be bigger than I thought. I need about that much more again. Maybe twice as much more. Okay. Put y'all on pause and go do it again. The drill was not happy, so I did this one pretty thin and added a little more. And I just finished mixing by hand. A little arm workout. Now, I'm not going to put any kind of smooth finish or anything on this because remember I'm going to build a form around it and come back with some leveling compound and the leveling compound can only go two inches so I just need something in this hole so that when I put the leveling compound on I'm going to come up between this level and the bottom of this so maybe half an inch to an inch I just want to come up to the level of the concrete floor itself or just a little bit below. I'll let that cure. Today's Monday. I'll let that cure and then Wednesday I'll come back with the leveling compound. And then hopefully on Thursday there will be a toilet here. So now that I've done that, I'm going to start working on my walls. Meanwhile, up in the parlor, Josh and Ben had come up with a new approach to the windows. As I said before, this is a learning experience as they move from installing that first window into working on this second window. And even though Ben is incredibly experienced in woodworking, it's not often that anyone gets to work on these curved windows. They're just a unique animal. And what they learned with the first one, it was very difficult to take those sashes in and out and do all of that trimming and fitting work. So they elected on this one to lay the frame on the floor and do more of the fitting inside so that they could easily work without having to move that sash around so much in and out of the window. So this meant installing the outside trim pieces, getting the holes pre-drilled on that and everything fit and being able to just do some slight modifications once it was up and actually in the window opening. So even the best of craftsmen can always learn something new. And again, because this is a unique experience, 
Ben just has to use his skills and do a lot of problem solving as he went on this project. They are getting ready for what they call the moment of truth. So they are fitting the sashes into the window before they put the window in just to make sure everything's the right size. Once Ben got the window snugly in the frame the way he wanted it and was confident that that's how it would actually sit once it was installed, he used his pencil to scribe that line we talked about. And if you notice, he's just holding the pencil tight against the bottom sill and there's that small distance between the wood of the pencil and the actual lead. And as he drags that pencil across the sill, the lead transfers the exact shape of that sill up onto the sash. This is a very common technique. You can add pieces of wood to make that distance anything you want. But in this case, just that little bit of distance of the pencil itself is enough to transfer that line. Because that sill sits at an angle though, he also wants to scribe the back edge of the sill against the back part of the sash so that when he planes, he can see that slope and get that correctly because the slope needs to match for that sash to sit down tightly against the sill and seal. The sill actually slopes, so he's marking the front and the back to get that slope. That is it for the video this week. It's already long, but there is still a lot of work to do. So be sure and subscribe and turn on notifications because we are halfway to meeting our goal of having a video out every Sunday this year. We are trying hard not to miss and there is certainly no lack of work going on at the house to keep us occupied for quite a while. And if you haven't already, be sure and vote for door number one, door number two, or door number three. We are holding voting open until June 1st. If you don't know what we're talking about, go back and check out last week's video and see where these beautiful designs by Heather are going to go on the outside of the house. We are the Lee Kempner House in Galveston, Texas. We appreciate you watching, and we hope to see you back next week.